Welcome to What's the Difference podcast. My name's Nate. My name's Claire. So, Claire, have you ever heard of a man called Frank Benford? Benford? I don't think so. Very few people have heard of him, unless you work in the mathematic world or something like that. He wasn't okay. actually a mathematician, he was actually a physicist, and people would say that those things can be quite linked. But And he actually worked for General Electric in, in their research laboratory in the 1920s. Okay. Now, what he was famous for is something that he spotted um, while he was carrying out his normal day-to-day work. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he lived in the 1920s, and before then, um, there obviously wasn't really calculators. There wasn't Mm. people use slide rules, which I have. Mm. Even when I was a kid, I mean, you didn't use them. I wasn't that old, but I've seen them. No, No, we're not that old. It just didn't make any sense. So when they had to calculate long numbers or they had to calculate um, equations, algorithms, mm-hmm. as they were called back then, before there were mm-hmm. algorithms or logarithms. Yeah, before it was a... <laughs> an actual yeah. thing. Um, they had what's called log books or log tables. And in there, we'd show you every single digit you would need within the one to allow you to do calculations and things like that. Right. Okay. Now, he noticed, though, that with his log book, it was well-thumbed that all the pages towards the beginning of it were well used. Mm-hmm. But as you moved to the end, the pages were pretty, pretty much new. They were never touched. And then he noticed that was the same for everybody else that was doing it as well. So he thought, that's just strange. Is this mm-hmm. for a reason? that something that has mm-hmm. happened? What he didn't realise that he had discovered, because he did a lot of testing over the next couple of years, which in the 1920s and 1930s, he'd worked out that numbers when they are published, for example, in figures and statistics, in accounting, in lots yeah. of different things, in, 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 in the normal way we distribute numbers, yeah. that they actually follow a... Um, a um, um, they, they always follow a natural order. So, for example, what you found out with some of his analysis is that 31% of all numbers will start with a 1 as the, as the first digit. Say that again, 30... 31%. 31% of, of all, all num- numbers, numbers. All numbers. Start with a one. The one. Yeah. As their first digit. Now, there's going to be exceptions to this, which I'll come to later on. But generally, yeah. the term, 31% start by one. 19% then have a two. Yeah. If you keep on going, when you get down to nine, it's only just about 5% will begin with a nine. So the not first all digit... numbers in the world. No, no. It's just exists, But numbers a, in, a, in a collection in a, of numbers. Numbers, yes. In a collection of numbers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 31% of them. So say, for example, you're looking at your accounts or your finances or mm. you've opened a table of, of a book with a table of numbers that showed you um, some weather data or showed you something that was mm. on from there or something yeah. continuous. Measurements. Or, yeah, yeah, things like that. Um, those numbers, will 31% will always start with a one. Okay? Yeah. And then yeah. He, went, he went and tested yeah. it. He went, it's, he it's went really, and tested it. Yeah. Yeah. Because what he did was he then tested that idea because he looked at the first digits of tw- of of twenty lists of different numbers he got and he totaled mm. over twenty thousand different observations he did mm. and he got them from all different sources he got them from geographic sources scientific sort of mm. demographics sort mm. of populations and one that one of the lists he he actually got was um, all the numbers in the issue of um, one one of the lists he used was contained in all the numbers in the issue of a, a Reader's Digest, for example. He used oh, okay. that one in the table. He just took a table, lots of these numbers yeah. in them. And again, he found that 30, 31%, the number had one as the first digit, yeah. 19% had two, yeah. only 5% had nine as the first digit in the number. So yeah. 1,000, 2,000, yeah. 9,000. Yeah, 1,258, 1,484, yeah. and so on and so forth. So he then made some sort of obviously physics was his assumptions that the distribution of naturally occurring data and numbers. He 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 then started to work out how well this this sort of frequency and how this looked, and what he worked out that you would expect um, certain things to always appear in a certain frequency. Mm-hmm. So what he ultimately worked out the probability that the first digit is either a one, two, or a three, mm-hmm. any number sequence that falls within those terms that he had put. I'm not seeing any number sequence across the world because there's loads of things that can stop this yeah. happening. But in general, most yeah. things will start with either a one, two, or a three. And that's 60%, 60.2% of all numbers. 
that are one, either two, from three. either from natural observations where we've recorded temperature and time and things like that. We'll start with the one, two, or three. Now, if you th yeah, I'm thinking about oh, sorry. No, no, go on, go for it. No, I'm thinking? thinking about age. Yes. There's going to be a lot more people who are teenagers in their twenties and in their thirties than in their nineties. Yes, that's exactly. So you think of, you look at any age graph, it doesn't yeah. it? it naturally starts, and you think there's more ones in things than there are. So yeah, yeah. because yeah. you get to this whole period of time where there's lots of lots of things from there. And don't forget, mm -hmm. this is about the first digit. He also did the same thing for second, third, fourth. Oh wow! Right from there, so he he worked out how what's the probability that the next number is going to be a one? The next. Number. Oh wow! So, so he worked the whole distribution yeah. out from there. Now, the reality is not everything follows this. So, mm. for example, things that have a built-in maximum minimum. So, say, for example, um, you look at, like, wage scales in a business. Now, right. a wage is, well, they start in a business that, say, the lower scale is 20,000 and the upper scale is 120,000. Yeah. Trying to work that distribution, that wouldn't work because someone's be fixed a maximum twos. minimum. Yeah. And if you think about things ones. like um, like stock markets and things like that, it works to a certain degree mm -hmm. but there are fixed limits to certain things where shares can't go below a certain limit they can't go above certain right. limits to certain fixed values yeah. that companies have from there um and also so but anything or anything that's got those anything that's got like fixed measures that naturally go from there the other one as well is um is it's seen in other sort of things around pricing and things like that now yeah. that's what benford discovered now in the nineties, there was a there was a, a doc, well he became a doctor. There was um mm -hmm. he, he was called Mark. I mean, he's now called Doctor Mark Negrini. Now, to be honest with you, he's a guy. He's one of my own personal um datary sort of research heroes, should we say? Okay. Um, you can go and look him up. Um, to for, so Doctor Mark Negrini, um, N I G R I I N I is that's his name. okay. Him. Mm -hmm. Um, he and well, obviously he's now a doctor. But what he specialised very much in was in understanding um accounting um issues and fraud issues within finances oh, right. now he looked at the work that benford had done and went hmm, i wonder whether this could apply to mm. other types of things because there's certain natural things that happen so think about your accounts in a business you you don't really have unless you've got certain fixed things so he worked up the certain things that happen within pricing mm. so within pricing within for example a shop Mm -hmm. A pricing in a shop will not work to this because you think about it. How many prices do you see where it's one pound? It tends to be 99 pence. It tends yeah. to be one pound 99 pence. So yeah, it's very rare. It, 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 and that's done for very, very good psychological reasons because yeah, yeah. you will happily pay 99. Other... Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll happily pay 99 pence, but not a pound. <laughs> yeah. That feels expensive, yeah. you know? Yeah. 10,000 pounds. Nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. What a bargain, you know. Yeah, our minds are crazy. Yeah. But yes, ultimately that's it. And he started. What he started to do though was, he started to study um, at some of the local courthouses where there've been fraud cases, mm. where people had um, been accused of fraud, and one of the ones that he really honed in was um, back in nineteen ninety three. And I'm sorry, we're back in America again, but you know, it's, <laughs> the gift just yeah. keeps on giving. So. And this, was this, this was the state of Arizona versus Wayne James Nelson. Mm -hmm. And he was accused of being guilty of defrauding the state of nearly $2 million. And he was a manager in the office of the Arizona State Treasury. Treasurer. So um, he was in charge. Yeah. Yeah. And they argued that he had diverted funds to a bogus vendor. Mm. So he had set up a bogus supplier to yeah, demonstrate so the absence. Yeah. And yeah. And he said, but what <laughs> the amounts of this though is hilarious. That what he said is that he'd found this sounds very familiar to a story that we may have just done. This is going to sound familiar. He'd realized that there was absence of safeguards in their new computer system. Mm. So to test that, he he thought he would divert some funds to test it. Oh, just to test it. Okay. Yeah, test it. And right. then realized that that worked. Now, the issue was that. Wayne James Nelson was also massively in debt. Ah. <laughs> now, yeah. what was interesting is he then went on to, um, before they caught him, they went on to, he went on to transfer two different things. It's very clever what he did, though. Um, the, the, his credit card provider 
because he had mm. 88 i think he had eighty eight thousand dollars in credit card debt i mean oh, just, wow wow yeah That's oh that makes me feel ill just I know, it's thinking about feel, that yeah get cold sweat yeah yeah now his credit card provider was called universal and they had mm-hmm. a supplier in their business called universal Okay. Oh, the supplier within the local treasury of the local state had a supplier called Universal. Oh, right. So he just I made sure see. that the account number diverted the money to here. And he basically paid off his debts by it. And he paid and off his debts. He paid, so well, initially, like a initially, initially mm-hmm. he paid off his debts. Now, mm-hmm. I've got a table in front of me, so you're going to have to visualise this. But basically, right. his first cheque in October the 9th, 1992 was £1,927.48. Mm-hmm. So far, it's for, it's starting with a one. Yeah. So that yeah. you could say what that might expect. fits it. Benford's yeah. law. His next check was for twenty seven thousand pounds nine hundred and two pounds and thirty one pence. Okay, so, so starts two. with a one, starts with a two. Next yeah. one, eighty six thousand two hundred uh, two hundred seventy two thousand one hundred one seventy yeah. eighty one thousand. 93,000, 89,000, 87,000, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, 92, it's very rare. Humans are very, yeah. very, we're rubbish at doing random because there's yeah. so many biases. There's so many things internally that work within our mind. We're just not yeah. good at doing random. Yeah. Without us um, even realizing there's biases and so on. And yeah. we're even really bad at doing random invented numbers. And if we do it, right. if a human chooses it, it's very unlikely it's going to follow Benford's law. Very, very unlikely it's going to follow that. And he started to realize it because this was moving away or diverging away from Benford's law, then actually mm. this could be a way of predicting fraud. Right. And he built a software system and a whole technique that allowed people have implemented that across their businesses that allowed them to do that. But what, again, it helped him to understand patterns because as is often in the case, fraud starts small. Embezzler starts with a small amount and then they increase, the, and then they start to increase the If the they amounts. get away with it, they go, up, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. Also, on top of that, so so first of all, Benford's law follows this curve. So you imagine a curve that starts with a, a really, really tall line. If you imagine a bar chart, yeah. really tall at the end, and it yeah. goes away like a long, long line. But like, like, imagine it's going downhill yeah. till you eventually get to where nine is, and it's very, very low. Because that's yeah. how it should naturally go. That's how numbers yeah. naturally work. It follows Benford's law, as you discovered. But with an embezzler, obviously, um, you want to maximize how much you're going to get out of it. Now he had realized that the amount that required additional checks in his in his company was a hundred thousand dollars. And he was the manager, ah. obviously, of this. So do you notice remember I said the numbers were like 86, 72, 91, 93, 99. Yeah. He was just keeping under. everything just below that amount. So thus, yeah, his Benford's law started first of all with that really low one. <laughs> And Either everything was shoveled across the right to the other end. So as he was doing, as he was trying to sort out his um his thesis or his theory about this, Martin Green, he realized mm. that actually this is um able to do that. Because he was able to keep below that threshold, that man he was a manager, he was able to conceal the fraud. Yeah. So that wasn't going to happen. And obviously the patterns were following the... Trusted. So basically you were getting an inverse Benford's law. It was starting from the other end, really, yeah. and then going back down that yeah. way, which was telling you yeah. that... So you could use that to work out yeah. a system that says, look for this signal within this type of information. Obviously, as we said before, it doesn't apply to everything. There are certain things we can't work to. But generally yeah. for accounting, it's yeah. brilliant for using this. Oh. Because to a human being, you look for those numbers and go, they look random. There's not a single number there that's the same. But in life, that's not how it works. Life is not actually that random. Life it's does, not as random as we think. It is. The patterns it, follow. Oh. So what? So this is what they said. They said the numbers appear to have been chosen to give the appearance of randomness. But yeah. Benford's law is quite counterintuitive. People do not naturally assume that some digits appear frequently. So yeah. we naturally... If you said to me, give me a, like a random number. So, yeah, actually, go on, Claire. You give me a random number. Yeah, 
Fun. Three digits. Give me a random number. Any number. So First thing in it. Two, five, six. Give me another one. Random. Anything. Three, three, six, nine. Give me um, another one. Seven, twenty-three. Exactly. So the thing I'm about being that, a yeah. different one, yeah, they're three yeah. separate numbers all the time. Yeah, you always, yeah. yeah, but yeah. you wouldn't, you wouldn't go oh two three one, oh two eight nine. One yeah. four eight. You, you wouldn't because we go, and that doesn't feel random enough. Yeah, even because even when we look at it, and, yeah, yeah, and bigger yeah. and smaller. And, yeah, <laughs> it's exactly yeah. because you feel that's making it random, but actually it doesn't work like that. Because the other thing as well that he spotted is, is none of the none of the check amounts were duplicated. Because if you're paying a supplier, uh, you'd normally have regular amounts. Yeah. Yeah. There was no round numbers, <laughs> so there was nothing that ended mm. in zeros. Yeah, that was the one as well. All the amounts included. Um, all the amounts included some sort of sense at the end of it, some more, some smaller digits. So what he said, however subconscious this manager was, he repeated some digits and, and, dig, and sort of combinations. Among the first two digits of the invented amounts, 87, 88, 93, and 96 were used twice. Uh, Just don't forget, he was trying to keep underneath. That 100,000. He was thinking yeah. about the 100,000. How do I randomly keep underneath? But actually, he was creating yeah. his own pattern by trying to yeah. keep underneath that. That figure from and there. trying to look random yeah. he actually made a pattern yes exactly yet oh that's so interesting <laughs> so what it, what what it was is that um and it goes on from there for the last two digits at the end he even duplicated those as well the actual oh. trailing digits as well those yeah. were duplicated this is, this is, from the whole thing he saw that there was a tendency towards the higher digits like sevens and nines they were the most frequently used, as we said before, from there. Mm. So thus, if you know this now, you yeah. can spot this. And that's what yeah. Mark, that is literally what, this is what, this is what Mark um, Negrini became famous for, for being able to develop a theory and a, a whole solution and a whole software that allows mm. you to go and apply that across your financial data and go, I can spot potential fraud here from there, from there. That's fascinating. Because it yeah. falls out the natural, outside the natural patterns. Now, what is even more fascinating about this is when I saw this, I thought, oh, mm. this is interesting. Uh, it was back in a couple of jobs back from where I work mm -hmm. now. It was at, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go and try that against some information and data. So I went and took some yeah. information. And the first, not personal information. No, not personal data. <laughs> None of this was personal data. <laughs> not only personal data. But the first thing I took mm. was I mm. just took some random numbers that um were used for identifying certain types of appliances we used that and mm. it sort of gives you an idea of what I used to do. Yeah. Um but it didn't follow Benford's law mm. initially. Mm. And then I realized that, oh, that's because we put limits on those things. They can only be right. this much, yeah. they can be that long. Okay, right. I need to find something else. So it went and tried it on a few other things and sure enough, it it you could see the pattern. You could see the pattern yeah. in all these data. Brilliant. Yeah. And then I just forgot about that. Yeah. And then um there was a period of time within the same business when something wasn't quite right and something that mm. we were working with. And I thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna apply Benford's law to this. Mm. And um all of a sudden everybody else is I think it may have been call stats or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it mm. was. I'm not going to go too much detail because I don't want to get no, to no. <laughs> too deep. But we'll say it's something that you probably should have went, somebody should have been doing something. They weren't doing something else. Right. And they were trying to fudge that to make it look like they were doing it. Right. Okay. And when you applied it against that, you suddenly realised that, um, one minute, this, this one individual stands out because everybody else's goes like this. Theirs yeah. goes like that. And it's like, Okay, maybe right. I need to go and look a little bit deeper. And thus, yeah. um, I was able to quite prove quite successfully that Benford's law and the work that, that, that Mark Degree really did does actually work. <laughs> so somebody had been making up the numbers to say, yeah. oh, I did this. And yes. yes. This is what, yeah, the yes. numbers that yes. go yes. with it. And they were exactly. using made up numbers. Precisely that. Precisely that. Naturally yes. occurring numbers. Yes. <gasps> that's, that's amazing. That's... It was absolutely fascinating. And yeah. even after that, I've gone on to use this in other things because it helps to identify if, for example, you, where it's really helpful for, or one of the things that I've work, worked on in the past is trying to spot where um, money's being stolen from your business, but outside your business. Yeah. 
So, for example, um, if somebody's setting up accounts or they've hacked into your, you start to see money moving outside your business in yeah. some way that's not an internal problem. It spots external issues as well. So yeah. it's been used for things like insurance fraud and those sort of things, or for spotting wow. patterns in, in those yeah. sort of issues. There's been, if you if you look into it, it is fascinating what it's now used for, all because somebody was curious right at the beginning, back in the 1920s, and went, yeah, these books I use for making my calculation, why do we always use the ones at the front and not at the back? And that they taught me a lesson about being yeah. curious about the world around you and looking at it from there. And thus, that is yeah. the story of Frank Benford and Mark Greeny. I hope you enjoyed that. I really did. So I, I hadn't heard of um, Frank Benford, but I will remember that name now. That's Yeah. I mean, he, 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 the, the work he did actually is probably the foundations of lots of fraud detection that happens today. Oh, wow. Well, I'll be looking for Benford's Law then everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, you, you can go and do it. I think I think yeah. we should actually, we should send a, put a link into the story somewhere where some people can see actually Benford's Law in action. You should actually see it. But some point, yeah, it's fascinating as to how that actually worked in real life. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that, Nathan. That was absolutely no. brilliant. And well, in that case, that is that's it for today, everybody. Um, this has been What's a Difference podcast. But hang on, hang on. Oh, Hopefully, no. other people have enjoyed it too. Yes, and no, yes. we want them to rate and review oh, and subscribe. <laughs> yes, please review, please rate, please subscribe. And also tell us about it. Tell us what you're enjoying. Just feel yeah. feel free to message us through all the usual set, yeah. all the usual links. You can find us on. Yeah, it's on, on all the show notes. Yes, please do. Well, oh, look yeah. us up. It's quite easy to find us on things like LinkedIn. And... Yeah. Not so Twitter. much Twitter for me, but yeah, and Twitter as well. No, yeah. I'm not great on Twitter. But... but yes, but you can find us at all those things. Yeah. Um, yes. So this has been What's the Difference podcast. I'm Nathan. <laughs> and I'm Claire. And until next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.